This iPad Pro has the most advanced display that I've ever personally experienced. It has the most powerful SoC in a tablet that I've ever used, even beating out the M3 Pro and M2 Max in benchmarks. It's insanely thin and even has a new optional Magic Keyboard, which does fix all of the issues that I've previously had with it. And now it even ships with double the storage. This is the new 13 inch M4 iPad Pro, and there's a lot to like about it. In fact, it's actually replacing my 15 inch Air as my everyday carry for productivity, but it's still an iPad. Without running the risk of beating a dead horse, I am gonna save those complaints that I have for toward the end of the video. I just don't want to take away from what this iPad actually is and how impressive it is as a tablet. It just seems like ever since Apple started putting their M series silicon inside of these iPads, every year they just get mind bogglingly more powerful and they don't really have the software to back that up. And okay, in full transparency, I paid for this, obviously, but I think that's important to disclose because the opinion that I have about Apple's newest iPad isn't influenced by other people including Apple. And God, was this thing not cheap. If you're looking at getting a base 13 inch iPad Pro M4 like I did with 256 gigs of storage, it's gonna run you about 1800 Canadian dollars. Now 1800 is already a pretty big price to pay, but that's not including the additional $450 Magic Keyboard I purchased as well. And realistically, if you're trying to use this as a laptop, it's pretty much a necessity. We'll also bring up this guy a little bit later into the video, but yeah, this whole kit cost me almost 2,700 Canadian dollars. Thankfully, the new Magic Keyboard is the same price as the old one, and it did get a lot of major upgrades, like an aluminum chassis, a glass haptic touchpad, faster charging, and thankfully now, a function row. I have been waiting for this day ever since the new iPad 10th gen dropped with a seemingly better keyboard than what was offered with the iPad Pros at the time, but I am happy that it's finally here. I chose the iPad and Magic Keyboard in both the respective silver and white color options, as I am just a big fan of how it looks. It still got the nice soft touch texture on both the top and bottom, and from my experience, the white version of the Magic Keyboards were always much more resistant to staining than the black counterpart. Notably though, is that thanks to the 13 inch iPad Pro being just about 5.1 millimeters thin, as well as weighing only 579 grams, this whole package together doesn't feel like a brick to carry around. This is at a point now where it's just kind of mind blowing, and I really don't mean that lightly. And all things considered, there have been some real good upgrades that are on this new iPad Pro. There's a new Tandem OLED display, which by the way, is not a silly Apple marketing term. Essentially, Tandem OLED is just two OLED panels on top of each other, which not only increases the panel's brightness, but it also impacts the longevity of these diodes because they work together rather than being overworked, which is what leads to burnout. Obviously, it does get way more technical than that, but in short, it's allowed Apple to achieve a 1000 nit full screen brightness with a 1600 nit peak in HDR. And specifically for a display that's this size, that's kind of insane. OLED tech is kind of crazy and there's different types of OLED, believe it or not, in a TV, which is much larger. There's a color filter over LEDs versus having individually lit R, G, and B LEDs. This is why achieving this kind of brightness level in a larger OLED is usually either difficult inefficient, or just going back to what I said earlier, can lead to burnout much quicker. For starters though, it looks fantastic. I've been enjoying a lot of content on this iPad since I've had it delivered, and I can attest to the fact that this is the best display in my house. Essentially perfect colors, amazing contrast, and of course, true blacks. In regards to this being an absolute media monster, yeah, it's very enjoyable. I mean, the first thing that I did on it was start to play Warzone and I just got absolutely lost in that game. But staying true to the pro name, I don't think that you can find better for a creative workflow at this price with this much power behind it. And of course, I'm mostly just talking about the display there. Editing photos, videos, color grading, pretty much anything that is actually demanding on this display is going to give you a very good experience. Combine that with the portability thanks to Apple shrinking the battery. Wait, what? Hold on. They shrunk the battery? Okay, so here's something that I find interesting. It's not that I've ever really had a problem with the iPad's battery life, but there are people who definitely do. There are people who use these things on a daily basis for their job, for real work. And when it comes to its 10 hour, 12 hour battery life, it really isn't enough for a lot of people. And I can imagine that having a larger display or at least more battery life, thanks to the more efficient M4 and new OLED display, 
would have been an objectively good thing for most people. But instead, Apple's decided to shrink the battery to accommodate for this insanely thin chassis. And while they claim the battery life is on par with last year's iPad Pro, which I still have to put to the test, but as of right now, I don't really think that's true. However, I just don't think that shrinking the iPad is really something that people actually care about. However, from a marketing perspective, it is absolutely genius. And I'm gonna say this, I'm not kidding. The first time that I've showed this iPad to pretty much everybody that I know, everyone has commented on how thin and light this thing is for the size. When I first opened this thing up, my reaction was, holy shit. I wasn't expecting that. In fact, this iPad is actually thinner than the Z Fold 5 when it's unfolded. And the first time I held that in my hand, I thought that was thin. To have this kind of power and this kind of display in a device that is essentially non-existent when you view it from the side, is incredible and of course it makes people talk about it but i think that the novelty of it wears off kind of quickly i mean i spend most of my time using this ipad with the magic keyboard and if not it's gonna go inside of a case so i'm not really getting any benefit from it being much thinner especially if you do end up putting a tempered glass screen protector on it which not only will add weight but will also make it feel a little bit more bulky yes it's nice I'm not gonna complain. We were given something kind of crazy, but I just, I don't really get it. Now, another big change that Apple did make though was move the FaceTime webcam as well as the Face ID sensor to the side of the iPad for a landscape orientation, which does make video calls much less awkward. Yet another thing that's trickled down from the 10th generation iPad, but I'm really glad that they did this. It just makes things a little bit easier for us. However, I will say that while Apple was a little too worried about the camera position though, they kind of bunged up a little bit, basically needing to redesign the Apple Pencil to accommodate for this layout. Now, the thing is, is that this is a really good Apple Pencil and the price point of the new Apple Pencil Pro is the same as the old second generation Apple Pencil. However, my problem doesn't really lie with the fact that you have to buy another pencil. It's that if you already owned the Apple Pencil Gen 2, you can't use it on this iPad. The only Apple Pencils that work with the new iPad Air and the iPad Pro is gonna be the cheapest Apple Pencil and the new Apple Pencil Pro. Granted, this Apple Pencil actually does have a bunch of cool features. They're not really for me. I'm not necessarily an artist, but when these kinds of things start to roll out in DaVinci Resolve, like the ability to squeeze for different tools, I actually think that's something that's gonna make editing a lot easier for a lot of people. Now, obviously, if you're a creative artist and you do a lot of drawing and Sketching. This is something that is actually a game changer, even if you're just taking notes for school. But this and barrel roll and the fact that they've actually enabled Find My inside of this thing does make it kind of worth it. Not that, you know, 200 Canadian dollars for a pencil is worth it by any means, but all of the extra features are nice to have and at the same price. You know, no one really put up a hissy fit before about the Apple Pencil, so I don't see why there should be a reason to do it now. It's just that if you're coming from something like a 2018 iPad Pro, Good luck, because you're gonna have to buy a whole new Magic Keyboard because it's not interchangeable and you will need a new Apple Pencil if you use it. Okay, I think for the most part, we kind of get the gist when it comes to the hardware changes. And as you can tell, I am actually genuinely excited about the new iPad Pro. However, where this honestly does kind of take a turn for me just a little bit is the new M4. Now, this is an impressive SoC. Like, I mean really impressive. It's faster than a real desktop Apple Silicon chip like the M3 Pro and M2 Max excluding the GPU performance though. And this could be the best time, if any, to really invest in the iPad. The storage has been increased with an available two terabyte option. There's also a new nano texture coating if you work or use your device in a studio or outside where light can be an issue. And you do get the newest SoC inside of an Apple device. However, I will say if you're interested in the nano texture coating, just pick up something like a matte or paper-like screen protector if you're really just looking forward to using it for drawing, it'll be a lot cheaper, it's not a permanent decision, and you're not gonna be ruining the display. The problem that I have with nano texture is that you have this beautiful OLED, something that is actually really nice to look at. And when you add that nano texture layer, those rivets and those little tiny divots in the glass, you're scattering all of that light, making everything look super washed out. So when you get deep blacks and crazy contrast, everything looks kind of gray and muddy instead of it being super punchy. So I will say, if you like the idea of anti-reflective and nano texture, 
just buy a screen protector. Though from everything that I've used this for, there hasn't been an issue at all. It's incredibly fast, but there never really was an issue. And with the M2 iPad Pro, I wasn't begging for more performance. Obviously better performance, efficiency, display, more RAM, storage, it's all a good thing. But my problem just comes down to the fact that the iPad is very underutilized. Like we're still a month away from WWDC and I hope for a lot to change, but I don't like buying or recommending products off of what they could be, especially when it comes to Apple because of how secretive they work. See, the iPad, it has a real, well, iPadOS problem, where at the end of the day, no matter how much is crammed into this tiny chassis, it's still an iPad. And I'm well aware that a lot of people want an iPad for the cut down, easier to manage iPad experience. But like I said, this cost me almost $2,700 and Apple calls it a pro device. It's one of those things where the iPad Air this time around might be a better value considering it now has M2, still supports the old Magic Keyboard if you own one already, takes advantage of the Apple Pencil Pro, and also saw a storage increase from 64 to 128 gigs. The new iPad Air also comes in an identical 13 inch size. So at the end of the day, all you're missing is the ProMotion tandem OLED display, a thinner chassis, the M4, the new Magic Keyboard, and a couple of miscellaneous things. Back to the iPad Pro though, I am hard on this device because I just want it to be better. I don't think that you guys realize that while I do use an Android phone, and while I'm kind of notorious on this channel for disliking Apple, the iPad is one of my favorite products. I've used one ever since I was a kid, starting with the iPad 2, and this is something that is almost like a necessity for me in my life. However, what I want to start doing and start taking serious is actually using the iPad as a real creative tool and understanding how people get by on this little machine. I think that using this thing for a month in a program like DaVinci Resolve might be a good test to see if this is a viable option for most people. And I mean, if Apple's branding is something to trust, it should be. This thing should easily be able to manage everything that I throw at it, especially with the new M4. But I am curious as to how iPadOS is going to limit me in doing some of the things that I feel like it should easily get done. At the end of the day, I've just never really understood the software barrier that Apple's created with the iPad, especially after having the Apple Silicon inside of this thing. There's no reason that this cannot be a MacBook replacement, except for the fact that Apple doesn't want it to be. And on one hand, you could say that Apple wants you to buy a MacBook as well. And yeah, that would be ideal for them. It makes them the most money, but there will always be a need for the MacBook. And I'm done looking at the iPad as some sort of companion device. And I hope for WWDC to really push the limits of what we know about the iPad today. In summary, from my short time that I've spent with this thing, I am beyond impressed. The hardware, the display, everything about this thing is fantastic, and I really do think that this is Apple's best product. There's no denying that this is miles ahead of any other tablet, hardware-wise, and for me personally, I cannot wait to begin to integrate this thing into my day-to-day -day life and see how it really does stack up. So if you enjoyed this video and you wanna do see an actual full-on review, long-term review of the new M4 iPad Pro, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments. Also, leave some sort of emoji like I don't know, the Apple emoji or something to let me know who the real ones are and if you've watched this video all the way through. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and peace out.